Hello and welcome to Profiles in Risk. This is your host, Tony Canyas. And today I have Alex Devo Devoto. I didn't, oh, as yeah. usual, I didn't ask how to pronounce your last name. Uh, I'm a native Spanish speaker, so in my world, uh, it's de Devoto. And Devoto means, de means very devoted. Uh, so, so, so Alex Devoto, as always, I didn't ask how, how to uh, pronounce your last name, founder of Levelfy. I'm assuming that's, that's how it. you pronounce the, the company. You pronounced it right. Uh, Very few I, people get to do that, so that's a good start. So uh, we're I, happy with that I, one. I struggled uh, because of the of the sheer la lack of vowels, uh, but even, it was until after I read the website that I, I it came to me. It's like, oh, I, I I get it, I get it. So so, Alex, I, I'm really excited to have you here because I am a huge fan of of uh, gamification. And there was a a book that changed my life a few years back, uh, w w which which is um, Reality is Broken. And I am a lifelong gamer, and that book really spoke to me on on how uh, work and all non fun activities could be made a lot more fun, and why that would be good for the for the world. Uh, so I love that you're applying some of those ideas to 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 insurance. Maybe not from that specific book, but but uh, so. Anyway, thank you for being here, and and I'll I'll kind of let you uh, introduce what the heck is Levelfy and and what what does it do and where, where did it come from? All right, well, so we'll kind of take it from there. There's a, bunch, a few good stories here. We'll try and try and mix them up. So the only start with, if it's right with you guys, is I'm just going to do a bit of a tour de force of let's we'll take one step back and look at what is behavioral economics and what is gamification, and then kind of how how our company kind of sprung from that, right? Mm -hmm. So originally in classical economics, the idea is we all completely rational. So every time we get a choice, it's like choosing something on a menu or choosing an insurance product. The idea is we all sit there, we read everything we need to know, we make the best possible choice, the most utility, the most happiness we can get. And that's kind of how classical economics thinks how, how demand works. And what happened is kind of these two kind of crazy kids in the 70s, uh, Tversky and Kahneman came along and said, hey, wait a second, this probably isn't actually how we think, right? Emotions kick in, we don't always do the research, we can get swayed, we can get nudged uh, to do various things. They started, they sort of really started the field of behavioral economics. And what got interesting was they were thinking, how can we use, or well, one of some of the questions, um, them and some later people, so Thaler and Sustine and others, how can we nudge people to get them to maybe make better decisions, right? If people are making poor decisions for whatever reason they put things off or they, they're worried about losses, um, for things like public health or for finances. Can we nudge people and use, use somebody to use apathy or use carrots and sticks to get people to make better decisions for them as in a sort of aggregate situation? So that's kind of behavioral economics. I mean, it's obviously a, a whole lot more than that. That's kind of your, your sort of one minute introduction, right? And one thing that's came out of that was gamification. So anytime we make something a game, we make it more fun. We make it more interesting. We add things like challenges and leaderboards and, and virtual badges you can win. You start to make what can be pretty a boring task more interesting. So that kind of came about, and then what was the sort of the third part to this was for those who remember Pokemon Go. So Pokemon Go came out three, four years ago. Tony, I don't know if you played it. Um, quite a few people did. Were you were you a? Uh, did you go catch Pokemon? So uh, I love the idea of Pokemon Go. Uh, I did not play it, and okay. the reason I didn't play it is because because I'm a little old. Uh, basically, the Pokemon craze was uh, I was a little older than the kids I was targeted to originally, so I never got into it. So that's why. But it, right, if you apply the same technology to, I don't know, a, a franchise that I was actually into, I'd probably be out there <laughs> chasing them too. Stuff, right? uh, but but, but the, 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 the technology of it is, is fascinating, the, the, the uh, augmented reality uh, yeah. idea. So augmented reality, but what's even kind of for us, what became really interesting, was people started writing papers on it, right? So it got downloaded several hundred million times. So it was this huge game. So in terms of, we're all data nerds in insurance, right? We all want lots and lots of good data. And so when you have a data set of like 100 million people plus, that's an awesome amount of data you're using, you know, several percentage of the planet's population. And what they found in the first six months alone of the game's release, people walked a total of 8.7 billion kilometers, about 5 billion miles, right? And lost around 100 million pounds, LBS pounds of weight playing Pokemon Go. So for us, we're like, hey, look, here's this huge, huge, huge data set where we can show that people will run around like crazy for virtual prizes. Maybe there's something in this, right? So we're thinking, can we add this to insurance? Can we put these things together? And you know, there's a lot of papers, there's plenty of papers about so the health side, health and life side saying, right, if you walk 10,000 steps a day, you lower your risk of getting cancer by 
that's from um, Harvard Medical Study. Uh, the NIH came out uh, last month saying those people over 40, for those people who walk 8,000 steps compared to 4,000 steps, they lower their all-cause mortality by 51%, right? Like literally you half your risk of dying by taking more steps. This is awesome. So like here's this great data, these huge data sets saying, look, we can really change mortality rates, healthcare rates, um, and, and life, life rates uh, by getting people to take more steps. So the kind of company came about around that time. And the sort of true story, which I'm always a little bit embarrassed to tell, but it's uh, always a good one, is I was, I was playing a mobile game on my, on my phone at like you know, two in the morning when I should have been sleeping, right? I was trying to kill the boss and get the, get the gold to buy the weapon to kill the boss. And I was so frustrated I couldn't do it. I was there thinking, like, I would literally do press-ups right now, this moment at 2 a.m., I'd get out of bed and start doing press-ups to, to kill that boss, right, to, to get to the next level. I thought, look, I'm, I'm a gamer, but I'm not a huge gamer. I'm not you know, a huge gamer, and I'm not a huge exercise person. I mean, you're kind of you know, regular, regular guy in that sense. Thank you. Is this something we can like apply to insurance, right? Uh, quick, 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 quick pause. Since most of the listenership is, is American, uh, I, I had to Google what a press up is. Uh, so right. a press up is, is what, what we call a push up. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, basically, right you, 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 were, you, you were thinking, I'd be willing to do push ups to. Uh, I was, get I wanted to kill that boss. It took like an hour. I could not kill that boss. And I was like, I want to like, yeah. kill this boss so I go to bed. And it's like, you know, two in the morning. I need to get up tomorrow. So um, this is kind of was literally the, sort of the motivation, right? And then I spoke to a friend of mine. She had a, had a PhD in, uh, from our MIT, from Imperial here, did postdoc work in obesity. And we kind of looked at these papers and thought, so wait a second, there's something in the science. We know that people will exercise more for, for this, right? And then we got uh, two Swiss reactories. They reverse engineered one of, um, one of the largest health insurers' cancer models and figured out some, some of the health insurers in the US were already paying rebates for people taking steps. So, okay, cool. We have a huge like, Fortune 100 health insurer who already thinks there's value in steps. And we know from the science that we can get people to take more steps. Let's kind of marry these two together. So long story short, we, uh, we created this kind of cool RPG. So people not game is a role-playing game. And we spent about six months a year, about 100K, uh, building this game with like trolls and fireballs and level up systems and swords and shields and all this kind of cool stuff making this game. And then we got accepted to the, to the Global Insurance Accelerator, the one in, in Iowa 2018. And um, so, you know, a, a great program. And we went and tried to sell this, this RPG fireballs and trolls game to old guys in insurance about to retire. So, <laughs> you know, like, so, 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 hold, hold, hold on. Okay, so, you, so you're from London. I'm from London. So you, yeah. spe you, you spent like 90 days in Des Moines, Iowa? Nothing shows dedication to insurance like flying <laughs> into the air in January when it's, it's I, minus 20 uh, degrees and the plane didn't work. <laughs> I was like, what the heck am I getting myself into for this like 90 days? Okay, okay. so, 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 so I, I happen to be an Iowa guy. So I grew up in Costa Rica. I went to school in Iowa, uh, both uh, undergrad and MBA, Iowa State. Uh, so, so I lived in Des Moines for about six years. I love Des Moines. It's a, it's a great little city. Uh, yeah. and, and it's great for insurance. Uh, so, so, so I've got to ask two questions. Uh, number one, was it summer or winter? It was January like 10th. It was absolutely it was literally minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That is just me. Yeah. Um, that, so that was, oh that was wow! Pretty, uh, so that shows dedication. If anyone wants to know the dedication we have as a company, yeah, uh, anyone you, who does that, you, you, like uh, the the UK can, can be a little dreary weather-wise. We what, to like, what, yeah, like to freezing, like to thirty-two degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, right? but, but, but it's like not the we insanity of, of yeah, Iowa I was winters. a whole new level. I was like, what the heck is going? <laughs> what have I got to go into? Um, it was a pretty, pretty interesting experience and yeah, snow and to hear that. No, 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 number two, very important question. And, and it's, it's not that I have a lot of Iowa listeners, but I do have a lot of insurance listeners. And because of that, Des Moines is, is a big city. Uh, yeah. So number two question, what, what, what's, your, what's your order at, at Zombie Burger? <laughs> you know what? I, I went for the Portobello mushroom. One thing would be really good. I was slightly disappointed. But apart from that, they have awesome, awesome burgers. I have to say I'm a, I'm a big fan. And... Um, the place which had all the arcades, we got to play all the arcades uh, for like, you know, it was a quarter or something less than that. So we, I think we, we beat Street Fighter 2 more than once for those okay. who were the game of people okay. there. So um, I, I, I definitely give it to you that this is dedication to, 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 yeah. to, the, uh, to, to, to the love of... of so it shows the love, right? Of, 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 exactly, of, of insurance. So, so, so anyway, so, so you guys got into yeah. GA. So, so we went there, tried to sell this RPG game to these you know, guys about to retire and insurance kind of just looks at us like, what, it, what, who are you? Go away. <laughs> you know, even I were nice kind of kicked in at this point. Like, what are you, what are you doing? You're wasting your time. Um, so long story short, we kind of changed that around. We created an app. So all these kind of ideas of behavioral economics and gamification into an app, right? So the whole point was, can we make an app which kind of my mom can use, which is really easy to use. Everyone can use very quick. 
and we kind of use these gaming ideas, this gaming, gaming ideology into an app where you be, we can now give you money. So you can spin wheels. If you, if you take enough steps and, and read items and do what we want you to do, you get to win like Willy Wonka golden tickets. You get to spend those and, and win prizes. So we kind of say, hey, this is completely free to play. Just take some steps, do what we want you to do, and you can win a whole bunch of money. And as an example, like a few weeks ago, we gave away a $500 gift card to a woman who was obese. She took a few more steps than she, she needed to. She hit the goals we wanted her to hit, and she spun the wheel, and she won 500 bucks, which was like a nice little, um, you know, sort of, uh, yeah, that, that's that's bad, that's nice. Right? That's that's money. That's real money. Yeah, the thirty seconds of uh, pressing a button, it, 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 it ain't bad. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of how the how the sort of product is, is what what the product is. There's a few games around it, so some kind of corporate centric games. Like, let's do a race around the world. So can we, in a corporate setting, like so either within the insurer, or within an employer, get everyone in the, in running around and they kind of become in groups and use the kind of ideas of leadership, a uh, lead, leaderboard, sorry, and competition and prizes. Uh, so we get kind of groups competing against your groups. And one of the great things about gamification is you get competition. You just really want to beat the guy next to you, right? So we kind of keep showing you, hey, listen, the guy next to you has got 500 more steps. If you take 600 more steps, you'll be in the lead and this kind of stuff. Um, so that's kind of one of the things we do. But as, as, as a product, as a level product, we're going to do three things. I'll run through it well, hopefully, hopefully quickly. Um, first of all is, is customer engagement. So how do you as an, as an insurer engage your customers, right? Even us in insurance are guilty of not always reading every email we get from our insurer and let it sort of sit and spam. So just because you build a website or build an app doesn't mean people are fortunate to come to it, right? So the question is, what do you do? So our answer is that if you give people prizes and rewards and games and make it fun and interesting, this idea of gamification, people much more like to say, hey, actually, actually, I'm gonna go and click on my insurer's app and open it up because I get a chance and maybe I'll win a Starbucks gift card. So we're saying don't try and you know, push insurance at them and say, hey, you get to win some stuff and then we'll kind of sneak in, do some more exercise yeah. or Insurance. And, and, and here in the U.S., where insurance is heavily regulated by, by, the, by each state, and, and in the majority of states, uh, you're not allowed to, like, give them money back, right? It's, it's rebating. There's a lot of rules around it. So, so how, how, do you, how do you get, a, 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 like, has that been an issue with, with regulation? So, no, so we, we, I mean, because we, we're not technically giving a, a rebate per se. They get the chance to win something or get to, to, to get something new. Um, so we're not sort of involved with the rebate. It's a good question because we had to look into it and sort of where our, where, what our lawyer said. Um, so that's kind of thing. And also can't put any money into the app in any way. So the users can't put any, any money into the app, right? So, so it's not gambling, free. yeah. It's not, it's not technically gambling. Also so a big a lot thing of the here. Ideas and sort of stickiness of it, right? And sort of the repeatability. Mm -hmm. But because they can't spend any money, they're going to spend steps. It's like, great, keep on going and taking more steps. You can spin the wheel more times, the more steps you do, or the more you read articles. So one of the cool features we have is you actually have to read an article about insurance and then answer some questions. So you have to not only read it, but you have to understand enough to answer some questions. And then you get another gold ticket, silver ticket, these kind of things. We have a bunch of prize mechanisms, right? So this is kind of one of the ways of saying is, hey, just because you can, just because you have that app, people won't read your emails, they won't look at your app. But if you offer them prize and stuff, this works, right? And a real quick case study, was a big Fortune 100 life insurer. They had a, had a, a standard website, right? And from that standard website, only about 10% of their insured were visited annually. It's 10% annually, and 19 didn't do that, which is, you know, unfortunately, that's, that's kind of the numbers, right? And they kind of did what we would call like a level one gamification app, like a basic app, counting steps, give you some basic prizes, sort of that sort of early, early use gamification. And they went from 10% annual engagement to 75% monthly engagement and 35% daily. 75% oh, 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 yeah. monthly, 35% so, daily. So I, I'm not a math person, but... <laughs> it's a paradigm shift, so right? 10% annually to 75 monthly. So ba yeah. Basically, like annually, that that, that, that's, that's like 10 to 99, right? Like, like pretty yeah. much everybody over the course of a year is going. 35, what was it, weekly or daily? 35% daily. 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 Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. So all of a sudden everyone starts opening up the app because they want to win the prizes, right? They're not there because they want it. They care about the life insurance side. They just want to win mm. the prizes. So if you can have all those carrots and that sort of glitzy stuff in front of people, they're like, hey, this is cool. And so our kind of whole ethos is look, we're not after trying to chase people who are really healthy and run and, and, and go to the gym every day, right? So about five, six Americans don't go to the gym, right? Now, obviously, it's a lot higher than that. Unfortunately, COVID, so these numbers are a little bit old, right? So our whole thing is, look, how do we get someone who is overweight or obese? Bear in mind, in the US, about 74% of Americans are overweight, 36% are obese. That might be changing with Netflix and snacking on the couch. It's probably going the wrong direction, right? Um, but you yeah, do have, definitely, yeah, for most people. Exactly. I mean, me included. I'm, I, I'm in this as well. So the question is, how do we get someone who does 2,000 steps to do 2,500 steps? 
Because just upping their step count a little bit, that's going to change their risk profile, right? That's going to make them less likely to get, to get chronic disease. And bear in mind that 75% of healthcare spending in the US is on chronic disease. So cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and COVID-19 also has a big link with obesity, right? If you're obese, you're diabetic, much like to have a mortality incident. Yeah, the comorbidity is so much worse if, if, yep. if you're in bad shape, basically. Exactly. So, th so this is the question is like, how do we get those people? So you always have your predator 20% who'll join every single wellness challenge and, and go running and, and do everything. And, they're, and they're, they're awesome people. I wish I could, be, I personally could be one of those people. Uh, <laughs> you know, that, that, that generally is not me, right? So like, how do we get the 80% of people who, who don't go to the gym regularly? The last time I saw inside the gym was in the, the 1972. Like how do we get them off the couch and doing a little bit more and what they can do? So a lot of our stuff is about putting sort of available catchable rewards they can get, they can get their badges and, and, and work to sort of compete against other people of a similar sort of level. And so that makes it fun, right? If you're competing against a marathon runner, I'm just like, hey, no, screw this, I'm not gonna, they, this guy's already won on day one. So if you can get with sort of people compete against each other sort of about the same level, it's like, actually, I really wanna beat this guy, I really wanna beat Tony here. I'm gonna take a few hundred more steps and like hit my step gun out. So it's about kind of using these sort of uh, carrots and sticks, as it were, right? To get people to be healthier. So it's going to, so back to what we do, level five, it's just, uh, it's going to be, become a little bit long, but A is customer engagement. So help people, help insurers better engage the customer. B is customer wellness. So we can get your aggregate population to take more steps and be healthier. They're going to lower their risk for chronic disease. And in the aggregate, you're going to have less claims and therefore less costs, right? You also get lots of data for the underwriters. So us, you know, the data nerds and the, the underwriters who love data, here's some good data. And there's obviously a pretty high correlation between taking steps and health. So if someone's taking 10,000 steps a day, they're going to be probably, probably be pretty healthy. They're probably high likely to be healthy. If they're taking 2,000 steps a day, probably quite likely of not being healthy. And there's, a, and there's a sudden change as well. So the other thing we kind of pick up on is, hey, if Tony here is doing 10,000 steps and almost, you know, as, as average over a month, two months, six months, he drops down to 2,000 steps, has something happened, right? Has he like, did he, did he lose his job and get depressed mm. and start drinking? Or okay. Mm -hmm. Did he have an accident? Or is, is his risk now changed? And you, know, you should look at that sort of look at the underwriting and look at if his, the cost of his premiums sort of matches his risk, right? Um, and the third part, which will be the interest for you as a PNC guy, is what we want to do is look at people who have, especially people who have PNC and life, but even people just, just straight up PNC, is if you have these cuts, there's a horrible cross sell between selling PNC and life, right? So we were a, a decent sized insurer in, in, in Michigan, um, and they had like an 11% cross sell of PNC to life. This so like, is not abnormal, yeah. They're exactly. different worlds, even within the same company. They're different worlds. They just they're completely different departments. There's probably like yeah, we probably have those at different different competition levels, and they probably you know it'd be mm. great to have them as part of the app, right? And so we're saying, hey, listen, you're leaving 89 percent of those people on the table. Why are you not? If they're already customers and paying you money and sending you a check and and believing your brand, cross sell, cross sell, cross. It's not easier to sell an extra upsell someone than it is to go get a new customer. So what we're going to do here is what we want to do is is roll the, roll the app out with PNC and show say, hey. You're, yeah, you have got home insurance for us, got auto insurance for us. Have this free app, it's completely free. You can win, we're doing like a $10,000 top prize, get involved. What we really do though is we take all their data. We gamify them okaying us to take all their step data. From their step data, we know how healthy they are. So we can then filter out who's going to have a high placement rate for life products. Mm -hmm. so let's say you've got a million people in your PNC book, right? Of that million people, let's say 100,000 are doing 10,000 steps a day. So we can filter, we can pre-fill those people out and say, right, these people, this 100,000 set of people are all likely to be very healthy, have a very high placement rate of life. We can people say, hey, Tony, we've seen you're doing 10,000 steps a day. You know, we, it sounds like you're pretty healthy. Are you interested in buying really cheap life insurance? And if you say yes, that's a hot, healthy lead for life insurance, right? Which is like manna from heaven to, to, any, to a broker or it's like, I know what you can do, you can do sort of automated underwriting and send it straight on to try and sell a policy, right? And selling so, life is, is hard. Like, like selling PLC is hard, hard. Right? selling life is really hard. It's really hard. So if you can do that, automate it from an app, which is already fun, people like, and just play the numbers. And if you've got a million people just, just send out, you know, the great thing about apps, it's huge scalable. So we can scale this up, you know, overnight, hundreds of thousands, millions of people, and just see, see you know, just filter it, filter, filter down to who's actually interested and in wants to buy life. And those calls are going to be, you know, make a sale agent's day when every call is a hot, healthy lead. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, yeah, so it's, it's a long show shop. That's one of the three things we do. Uh, we've had a, we, we still kind of in show tech, we're still in the startup world. We've done a few, a few POCs. Uh, we did a POC with a, with a Fortune 100 health insurer in the US in, in, in Atlanta, where you're currently based. So it's good to hear that. Um, we had over, over eight months, we managed to increase the average step count in a majority obese population by 19%. It was majority obese, female over 40.
which is the hardest population to get, right? Interesting. Okay. And we managed to push so, them to get 90%. So, so this, this, this is very interesting. So females are over 40. Stuff crowd. That, that, I mean, literally that, that's, well that, that, that's not a population of gamers. No. And, right, right. So, so, so on average, right? So, yeah. so. So actually the highest, highest um, growth population in gaming is actually female over 40, over 50. Really? So they're getting into like the candy crushes and those are sort of, sort of okay, more the casual gaming. Sort of the games, the casual gaming. Uh, because, that's fairly I mean, big. Because like, if I hadn't read uh, Reality's Broken, and if I, if I wasn't uh, kind of advocating for, 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 for gaming, uh, I... I, I would have thought, okay, yeah, this is fantastic for my men under 35 who are you know, already gamers. Yeah, they will totally adopt this, and they're probably not in great shape, so, so this will, it will help the them get in shape. Correlation between obesity but, and uh, gaming. Right, but, but, yeah, but yeah. is it really going to make a difference to, 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 you know, to, to, to my older population or, 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 or my women who are traditionally not gamers? Uh, so, yeah. so what, what you're, what you're finding is, is, is that the, like, like they might not get into the RPG, but, but they get in, into, into the, the other, uh, incentives. Yeah, exactly. So, so when we say, Hey, we, you know, there's an RPG, you can play it if you want to play it again, you're going to kind of start to skew into sort of young male, right? You're exactly, saying, Hey, yeah. it's just a basic app. You, you know, it takes 30 seconds to press a button and win 500 bucks. Okay. That means people of uh, all generations. And so. Our kind of whole design ethos was, A, how do we, how do we approach people who are overweight and obese, not people who are hardcore runners? And mm. B, how do we get all the demographics? How do we get people who are female, who are over 40, uh, people who are not sort of in that sort of, you know, really tech literate ideas? So again, kind of, you know, the, the joke is, but the, the truth of it is like, you know, if my mum can work this app, um, we're probably going to a winner. This is probably something good. If it's too complicated for her, she doesn't understand the, the, the UX UI. Okay, we have to go back to the drawing board and relay it out and sort of how do we make mm. this really easy to use? Um, so yeah, so it's, it's, it's really a question, especially from insurance, is how do we get to A, the most profitable people for, for insurance or the people with the highest, highest claims rates or highest risk, um, and, and B, as universal as we can so we can get to as many people, not say, hey, it's just a really small sub segment, but as many of your insured population as possible. So then, you know, change it. We're, we're all about the aggregate. We're about how can we change those numbers, those risk profiles in the aggregate, not to one individual. Interesting, interesting. So, so you, you've been doing this now for two years. Yep. Um, so you're, you're still very much in, in, in the, so the product is developed. It, it was developed, uh, through, through GIA. Uh, so, so currently basically you're trying to, to get it in front of, 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 of the different carriers, life and, and health, especially and PNC for the, for the cross sale. Yeah. Um, yeah. exactly. So how, we kind of sit between marketing on one hand. So, Hey, can we get some marketing budget? You can spend you know, tens of millions of dollars on a, on a virtual gecko or, we're saying like, if you put that money into like giving prizes and someone says, hey, I just won a Starbucks gift card or I won 50 bucks from my insurer. That's a pretty cool thing. More than, hey, I've won, you know, watched a thousand of these damn adverts of, of, a, of a virtual gecko or a virtual soldier. Or maybe they can you know, fight it out sort of like. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sort of, I, I've seen those in my dreams, basically. I've seen so many of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's only so much of State Farm. You can see you were talking about last time about sort of State Farm at NASCAR and stuff, right? So. Sure. So part of it's marketing and then part of it's underwriting. So can we change those risk profiles? And then sort of obviously innovation always kind of kicks in and has, has a little bit of budget to sort of you know, pop in and have a look. So what, 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 one tricky thing here, here in the States, which you don't have in, in, in the UK, is that, that most of us are insured by our, by our employers, right? So, so I don't choose my, like I, I have health insurance through my job at Jacobson. Uh, it is a, uh, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois, right? Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois doesn't sell me, uh, uh, right? As long as I'm employed by Jacobson, that's who, that's like I'll be yeah. insured by whoever, whoever whoever they they choose, right? Uh, so so part part of the issue is is that from from the perspective of of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois, uh, helping me be healthier. Uh, who knows who I'll be insured by next year, right? Which in, in the UK, the big advantage you, you have is that if you, if you can get the NIH, uh, you know, on board for something like this, yeah. it, right? So this you're, is, you're, you'll be insured point, by the yeah. NIH forever. Yeah, so good, good point. I mean, it's sort of different. You know, the, you know, we can spend a lot of time, a lot of people do sort of the, the pros and better cons of sort of mm. single payer uh, healthcare in, in, in the UK and US, right? 
Um, for us, yeah, it is kind of employee benefit. So part of this is under your employee benefits and saying, hey, to a company, you've got 5,000 people, roll us out into your company or roll as part of your insurance with you know, XYZ, um, and we're going to lower your premiums. So people have done that sort of Fitbit did a, did a, did a study there, and they, lo- they lowered the health premiums by about 5%. These guys were saving like 800 bucks a year on, on uh, using sort of Fitbit and using some of these wellness challenges. So again, the insurers know they, they can actually offer lower premiums to people by rolling out these challenges. And also it's a differentiator. So again, if you're trying to sell health insurance, you're trying to sell it as employee benefits. If you say, hey, we're going to add on all these kind of fun games you get to play and we'll basically be your wellness provider as well for free. Um, and we're going to you know, sponsor with 10,000 bucks worth of prizes. That might be a sort of helpful sell in terms of employee benefits than we're yet another health insurer trying to you know, compete for the same business. Yeah, th- this is a, a world's better like light speed better for, from the, win, win, win. For, for, from from the wellness uh, offers I, I've had at the large insurance carriers I've, I've worked at where it, it was usually uh, log in to this difficult to log in system that's behind the VPN that you can only do on your, on your home <laughs> laptop uh, and enter your steps. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. man, manually enter your steps and we hope they'll, they'll be real. And, and, and then you, exactly. after six months, you get like a, a cozy or something or a sweater. <laughs> Um, we, we love that, right? Because they, they charge multiple times what we charge. And so we, you know, we're super cheap. We're like less than a dollar per user per month. So we're super cheap. And we offer kind of actually fun ways of making it interesting and engaging. And a lot of people kind of have like, oh, I think I've got a wellness, exactly this, right? I think I've got a wellness sort of something at work. I haven't checked it out. The emails sit in my spam with all my other insurance emails. Like and they don't really get involved, right? So we're saying, okay, we make it super, super easy to use and make it actually engaging. You can see all the metrics, you know, both your personal metrics and numbers and you know, fill it up a hundred different ways. And then all the groups and get these kind of competition kicking in. Hey, you get to win some prizes. You do it because you want to win prizes. You know, we'd love it because you're doing it because you really want to get healthy. And there's a tiny sliver of people like you know, January 1st, today I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to sign up to the gym and all this stuff, right? But we're saying there's much, much bigger group of people, both within your employee, within the insurance company itself, and within your insured, if you're just like, hey, do you want to win $10,000 for doing not very much? That's a much easier sell. Um, so that's you know, always been our sort of, our kind of core laser focus is how do we, so, how do, we do this? I, I, I'm assuming that the, the data that, 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 that they get as the employer is somewhat kind of aggregate data for the entire company, not like, hey, Tony has averaged... <laughs> Tony's not running too much. He's, 699 uh, steps per go. day this week, right? You'd be, you'd be pretty pretty far back, I think. Exactly, exactly. Uh, like I, I hate working out, right? So 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 like like. Your belt I, 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 I'm assuming that 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 U.S. Uh, health privacy laws, uh, HIPAA or, or or whatever, keep you from from getting too big brotherish, and. and so but, two like, so there's two sides to that, right? One is we one of the kind of our USPs is we're very good at game playing. Everyone has to agree to give us all the data. So everyone actually has to oh, okay. do stuff, right? GDPR, GDPR in the UK and in Europe, which is oh, pretty, yeah. pretty, yeah, pretty difficult, right? Um, so we actually get one to take and give us all the data. Then we kind of reach, that we then give to the insurer if the insurer wants it. So the insurer, how the insurer wants to cut it up, we give it to them based on regulation as well. But in general, what we found is, A, we take very little HIPAA, very little PII. So we, we take only just their sort of username, rough age group, gender. Right? We, don't, we, want, we, we actually we try not to take that because of the, the, the mm-hmm. pain, yeah. pain but that HIPAA is and PII is, right? Um, and then we can, we, we, we're going to data provided to the insurer. So we can say, Hey, this is the, we, we can offer you, what do you want to take? Um, and depending on state regulation and, 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 U, and U.S. regulation, but so far we've seemingly, again, I, I have to refer to the lawyers. Um, but in general, yeah, what, what we understand is what we're doing isn't, isn't, hasn't too much sort of crossover with HIPAA and PII, at least just on the step front. And then you start aggregating with lots of other data, like a little more difficult. Um, so we haven't had any issues. No one's raised a red flag that just yet. And so we're going to cross our fingers and, and hope that's, that's the case. But, uh, yeah, we've, we've at least been advised. That's not a problem. Okay. Uh, what, what, what's next? Uh, and, and not, not only what, what's next, like, 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 like for you guys, but, but you, like, I, I love the topic, but you actually live in, in, in this topic. Uh, what could this look like 10 years down the road? So good, good question. Um, hopefully we'll, we'll be part of that. Um, so, the, so the idea is, I think 
one of the kind of the trends in wellness is about holistic wellness. It's like a little bit of everything. So we want to do not just steps and exercise, but you want to do sleep and nutrition and you want to do anti-smoking and stuff like that, right? And a lot of one, one approach has been, hey, we're just going to throw everything, like kind of get against the wall. And we're going to have just a web page that tells you, hey, you should sleep more. And a website which says you should eat you know, more fruit and vegetables. And hey, you should take more steps. We've so far focused on steps and exercise because it's the most important part of that, right? And where you can get good data. So if as an insurer, what you want is good data. Someone mm-hmm. just saying, hey, I, I think I slept okay the last week is not very useful for you as an insurer. You're like, well, does that, you know, how many hours is that? What does it mean? So we think it's better kind of like that Apple idea of like, we can do one thing really, really well and then slowly expand over time. Then sort of the, you know, the Windows 95 version, which is like just throw everything out there and hopefully something will, will stick. But I think in the next sort of next few years, at least for our, our roadmap is to add in nutrition. So there's some really cool stuff you can do with nutrition. So some of the new phones, you know, that Samsung, Apple are talking about having spectrometers within their phone is like one of the next sort of big hardware advances. What a spectrometer does is basically scans kind of like Star Trek style scans, whatever you're pointing it at, and looks at the wavelength of light. And from the wavelength, it can work out what it's looking at. So you could like scan your food and work out, hey, there's a potato here and there's some, you know, there's a steak here and there's some broccoli there, whatever it may be. So, so actually you can start scanning your food. It's pretty cool. There's, I think, a French startup which is looking at doing computer uh, rec- um, image recognition. So it takes a picture of your food and will try to work out some using some AI, ML, you know, all the, all the buzzwords. Uh, what, what that food actually is and then the calories and then the protein content, et cetera, et cetera. So I think you can do some really cool stuff around nutrition, uh, things like sleep. So you know, or obviously the aura ring sort of tracks your sleep and lots of, there's lots of apps out there tracking sleep. So I think sort of the future is bring this all together um, and making sure that all parts of your wellness are, are, are sort of, you know, you have data, good data for. So it's not just about sort of doing it, it's doing it right and getting good data. And that's more important. Um, yeah, we were working with this um, anti-smoking NGO uh, sort of pitching them, can we gamify not smoking? Um, and there's some cool stuff. You know, there's, there's now machines you, you blow in every day and they, they look for chemicals to see if you actually had a cigarette or not. So they can work out, you know, pretty, pretty categorically. And you add that to an app, work out who it is, do some KYC, know who it is. You can start to say, hey, okay, this, this guy, John over here, you know, we're pretty sure he hasn't smoked for a month. We're going to give him prizes and he can, he can spin wheels. And, that's, and if we add the layer of gamification on top of that, you make it sticky. And then there's very, there's very little research in this. What's something we want to do is more research in sandy smoking. But the little research there is shows that gamification is far better than just giving someone a lump sum at the end of three months for not smoking or saying they haven't smoked. Um, so, yeah, it's kind of it's one of the we were just just before our call where we were chatting. The thing about gamification and about behavioral economics is the more you look into it, the more you read of it, the, kind of you, the deeper down the rabbit hole you go. And the more you realize this can apply to pretty much everything. And you want to start applying gamification to, to make anything, what it may be, more, more efficient and nudging people in the right direction. So I think that's sort of, you know, hopefully where we see it going. So certainly as our roadmap as a company, what we want to build out in the next few years. And I think where sort of at least wellness as a journey will sort of we'll get to. Awesome. And we, we always ask when we have InsurTex, uh, kind of, what gave you the idea? So in your case, looking at your, at your LinkedIn, it doesn't look like you grew up in insurance. And uh, I fell into uh, it like like a lot of people. Like, absolutely. So, if you told me a year before I was going to be in insurance, I would have laughed. And so, uh, so what 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 was it when when you're getting your your master's in East Asian studies? <laughs> I, I, have, I have a master's in Chinese foreign policy in Africa. So if anyone wants to know about that, exactly. exactly. So, so how, how how do you go from that to oh, this is a great gamification idea for insurance? Yeah, exactly. What's the origin good, story? Good, 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 good point. So yeah, I did that, and uh, as I said, I did my masters there. I was pretty peripatetic, and I sort of went and lived lived around the world. Uh, I lived in China for about ten years, and kind of kind of joke. I spent you know days. We I did hardware manufacturing in China, so we actually built products. We built the world's smallest phone charger, which was a was a personal thing for us, and we had you know, Apple approval on this. Um, and we spent you know lived in China for a few years, so I kind of went to negotiate with Chinese factories like for days over the price of a screw. So I kind of learned how to really keep those costs, so drive those costs down over everything and, and, and do that. So I kind of was in retail. Um, retail is a pretty tough business. People are not particularly friendly, not particularly nice, right? Everyone's kind of trying to screw everyone over and everyone's trying to sort of get, get one over each other. And so one of the cool things about insurance just is as a general sort of point, which I always sort of tell people when you know, they're surprised, they meet me later and say, hey, how did you end up insurance? Is the people are really nice. And I think it's, we have a, a really cool industry where no one really knows about industry pop when you're in it. You kind of fall into it a lot by mistake like I did. And everyone's kind of friendly and nice. So when I came from retail, everyone's trying to stab each other in the back. I don't think I made a single, I made one friend in 10 years. And, and here, you know, everyone's, you know, 
we all know from going to going to Vegas every September, uh, maybe not this one. You know, everyone's friends, everyone gets on, everyone has a drink, everyone like you, you know, everyone's kind of friendly and helpful and say, hey, you know, I, I can't help you, but I'll let me put you in touch with someone or, or give you give you a hand. So I think the people are certainly one of the biggest kind of components of this. Um, as for me, yeah, I was running a hardware study, hardware company. Hardware was getting a little bit difficult in sort of mid uh, 2015, 2017, 2017. I was, came up with this idea for this game. And I was like, okay, hey, you know, the people I was working with, let's put like an hour a week into this. Just like, I'll throw like a hundred bucks and we'll do some designs. And it kind of, over the course of a year, we kind of went from doing full-time making hardware and selling chargers and speakers. And we were the first one in the world to do solar power Bluetooth speakers. That was another one of the cool ones. In you know, an hour a week on making a video game to full-time doing a video game and doing an hour a week on, on the other company. So we kind of wrapped that one up. And so we did this sort of GIA thing, kind of got pivoted. Uh, went through um, the product accelerator also up in up in Michigan, so another another Midwestern four months in, in the Midwest, and kind of it kind of grew, and we kind of just it felt better, it felt right. People were more interested in what we were doing. People liked the idea. People were friendlier. We managed to raise some money. Um, it kind of just it just worked a lot better. It was just it was just a better industry to be in, and, and we could have helped some people as well. So, uh, so yeah. so when when you discover GIA and and you're like, oh, this would be a good match for us. Yeah. Where the heck is Iowa? <laughs> I, I was at Iowa, Idaho, Ohio. It's it's somewhere <laughs> over there. I don't know. Where the heck is Iowa? Yeah. I think I think also a, a, a embarrassing to say, uh, but a true realization is a lot of a lot of startups is you also you are on F success or one of the um, sort of aggregators. You just sort of apply to programs. You're like, okay, I'm gonna apply, 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 apply. Yeah, of course. Through, right, and you're, it's, it's a numbers game. So you just apply to all these things. And we kind of started getting through. So actually, this program started to look interesting. And and and, and okay, this is you know we're getting to the second round, third round. And we almost didn't get in. In fact, we were actually, we were, we were told we, we didn't get in. I was incredibly upset and sort of messaged the MD at the time. And someone dropped out and we actually took that position. So, so whoever dropped out in 2018, you know, my thanks goes out to you because we, you know, we got the investment, got the whole thing and our whole lives uh, pivoted and changed for that moment. Um, and it's cool. Like, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done is like going to that program. It was you know, sometimes pretty brutal. And I think any good accelerator is pretty brutal. Um, but you learn an absolute ton. You, know, you pitch everyone, you meet everyone. So it, it, it's pretty cool to do for, for, for everyone who's uh, um, you know, starting out, certainly as a startup in, in the show tech or as a general startup, is going through these programs. You, you do learn an absolute ton um, and make friends, which you know, I'm still friends with a bunch of the people today, the cohort bodies. So yeah, pretty, pretty cool. And then we did, so did Accenture, did the proto program in Michigan, same kind of thing. Got to meet some really cool companies, get those really good introductions. And I think doing those accelerators in the Midwest, one of the really good things is you kind of have that Midwest and nice, but because you're not in New York, not in LA, people have more time. So you get to meet some really high end people, right? That's a very like, good point. I, mean, I had the CIO of a, of a Fortune 100 company as one of my mentors. I'm like, wow, like, you know, there's no way you'd answer my email. If I emailed you or in New York, or you'd spend five minutes with me. You like, you took me to lunch. I was like, this is, this is pretty cool. Um, so I think you, there are those advantages apart from, Obviously, zombie burger and uh, three dollars for Budweiser was about fifteen in New York. That was that was a, a definite surprise after a few months when you're in, in in the Midwest. You get used to paying not much, and you go to go try and buy a beer in, in Boston, New York. You're like, wait a second, this uh, I'm not sure this bit is right. Um, yeah, no, no, nothing like going back to London after spending months in, in Des Moines. No exactly. kidding. A, a round of gin and tonics <laughs> here is, uh, is significantly more expensive. So uh, I don't want to tell our investor we blew all their money on that, but it was uh, yeah, certainly changed the yeah, change our, our, our spending. Um, so yes, but I'm, 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 I think I'm a closet fan of, of the Midwest. Um, you know, it's always great to go out as sort of being being bred as well and being a bit of an American bar. Um, I think you, you do get there's much more opportunities as, in terms of work and get to chat to people, sit down and get that time. And both those accelerators we did, both the, the Proto in Michigan and, and the JA, really gave us like FaceTime, which is, you know, as a startup, it's super important to try and get in, get through the door and try and sell your product and, and learn. And, you know, after 20 pitches on RPG, we learned, hey, go back to the drawing board, <laughs> came out with, I, I, I believe, I don't want to speak for everyone, I believe all eight companies our cohort actually pivoted during the program. I may, Makes maybe sense, yeah. too, right? So the other kind of amusing thing is everyone pivots and everyone realizes actually, mm -hmm. hey, I think I know insurance. Oh wait, I don't know insurance. I actually need to, to change. And even people in insurance, you know, trying to sell that product. So um, no, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of accelerators. When they, when they work, they're, they're, they're very, very helpful to, to start and worth every penny. And they give you a bunch of cash, which is always nice. Excellent, excellent. So, so uh, uh, advice for, for young uh, startup insurtech in, insure founders especially, don't lead with the RPG. Don't, don't, uh, don't do RPGs. 
<laughs> you do oh. we've got one we can sell you for you, know, you can buy all the code don't worry about it we'll, we'll give you a good price right <laughs> it, it, it's it's still well the, the, i mean the, the rpg is still on the website it's, it's still and, yeah it's still it's a playable game it's actually quite a fun game it's you know it, I'm, I'm pretty high up level up i've been playing it yeah and 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 you, you've got it as your linkedin cover image so so yeah, you haven't I completely give it that, up but, uh, give it up on it yeah, my, my uh, heart is my heart is wanting it, to finish that game it's only raise, raise enough money we can get <laughs> half a dozen developers finish that game and releasing it and just just making our baby our baby happen um but yeah i think that's it's it, yeah learning to pivot is important right you've got to be flexible you've got to listen to what the customer wants and not try and put a square peg through a round hole and and sort of coming back with an app and then redefining it and remaking it, remaking it, remaking it, adding adding stuff to it, uh, people start to like it, right? And we had people who had worked at the company we did the POC with leave, go to other companies, and then email us saying, "Hey, can we get your product for our new company?" Because they're like, "Cool, I want to, I want to win five hundred bucks for my new company." It was not the old one, um, so it's, some, it's nice to get some sort of word of mouth mm -hmm. marketing, as it were, right? People saying, "Hey, we like your product enough; we think it's worth checking out at our new company." Um, so that's kind of where we're. One of, one of the nice things about making apps, it's, it's, it's sort of easy to do and obviously scalable as well. Fantastic. So, so, so uh, uh, when the podcast goes live, I, I will include your, your LinkedIn uh, on the show notes and the Level 5, Level five uh, website. Yeah, we so, thought we were being so, clever getting a five-letter domain name and then realized very few people could actually pronounce the name. So it's uh, like... Yeah. So it, it, it makes sense. If you're a gamer, if you're a gamer, once you see what you guys do, level oh, up. level, of course, level, exactly. Let's level, let's level up, uh, level up together. So level five, right? Yeah. The, so. the average, you know, head of HR or, or, or even CIO at an insurance company. We, yeah, we've had some be... good spellings. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's never a bit of uphill. <laughs> so we're, so we, we, we're going gonna, to, gonna, we're, we're going to spin it and to say, hey, only the cool kids know how to pronounce it. So if you uh -huh. listen to the podcast. You get to be part of the uh, the cool kid group here, and uh, and know how to actually pronounce the name. Uh, but so, yeah, that's been a, been an interesting one. So, so any of the listeners that, that think this is a cool idea and want want to, want to bring you into their, their company, uh, well, what's the best way to 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 get a hold of you? Uh, please, please get uh, through the website or through you know, Alex at Levelfly dot com is the email, um, and how you can download the app and have a have a play of the trial for free. Uh, yeah, we're so we our little sort of thirty second pitch is that we're we're pretty cheap. You can try us internally first, just to so within your HR, check us out, see if we actually do what we you know, what we say we do, and see the metrics work. Uh, ultimately, our goal is to help insurers save a ton of money because getting their share population to be healthier and not make as many claims or be able to cross sell or or um, you know having better marketing. And um, but yeah, we we you know POCs are, are pretty cheap with us, so we're happy to kind of do it and show you the data. And once you once you actually like the data, then we can start to roll things out. So that's what we want to do. So certainly get in touch. We you know we have a pretty pretty cool app, and you can win some money, and we can we can always sort of tweak it so that the uh, person who gets in touch wins the wins the top prize um, if we have to. So uh, that's one of the fun things about not technically having a gambling app is you get to sort of play god mode, as it were, and uh, and, ch and change things around. So that's a little bonus. Anyone who's got this far in the podcast and still listening, that you can uh, you know hope you have a have a good morning. Um, Excellent, excellent. I, I love to see stuff like this uh, with, with, with insurance. There's, mm -hmm. you know, what, like 1,700 insure techs out there, but most of them are either trying to, trying to do the distribution piece or take care of like an esoteric part of, of, uh, of what we do and make it a little bit better. Uh, I, I love that, 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 that you're doing something really fun around insurance. Like, 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 like yeah, we're like a bolt on, we're like, we're like the fun bolt on you put onto the very, very front of insurance. Um, and it's kind of cool. I mean, it's like, it's such a you know, cool, in interesting industry, which has so much potential. And we're like, Hey, we just want to be like one little part of this, but we can help you know, nudge figures. And the great thing about insurance is if you can just slightly bump up you know, figures in terms of sort of risk or claims, or whatever it may be, there's a, a huge amount of money to be made, right? So all the investors, especially our investors and all the other investors listening we're, we're raising around now, um, you know, there's tons of money to be made by just changing like risk profiles, one, 2%, percent. you are talking you know, tens of billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's just gigantic numbers. Yeah, so just, it's just that it's a nudge thing. And then it's just like, hey, can we make it a little bit more interesting and make it a bit more exciting, get people to know more about it? And how do we do that? It's kind of a fun challenge of how do we get it to be sort of you know, up, up the rankings of what people want to do and uh, you know, it's pretty easy when you offer them cash. So we do kind of have this uh, kind of you know fifth ace up our sleeve is hey, instead of fighting it out to try and get people to download our app on on the app store with with uh, ads and flashy ads, we can just offer lo lots of money or the potential of winning money. Um, 
So that's one thing. And then the other thing is, I think you're taking gamification into other, other, other places. So the like, question is, what else can we gamify? And because the gamification is such a sort of natural tool, so we were looking at things like dental insurers. Can you gamify getting people from low-income houses going to the dentist? So every time they go to the dentist, they can get a whole bunch of lottery tickets. And there's obviously a correlation between gambling and low income. So it's like, hey, we know you really like playing the lottery. I mean, everyone does. It's, it's, it's kind of universal in demographics, but particularly in, in low income. So one of the things we're looking at is, hey, you know, these people are, because they're not going to the dentist, they're you know, losing. There's a lot of money being lost and having to be paid for, for the later on dental treatment. Yeah, yeah. Well, once they go with an emergency, yeah. Exactly. I mean, same with most, most healthcare, same with you know, eyes and everything else, right? Um, so if we say, hey, you can get a whole bunch of tickets to, to go to the dentist every time and bring that gamification idea in, if you can up those rates for people going to the dentist more just going to their checkups, again, you can, you can spot something early, which would be a $10,000 operation as a $200 operation. And so you as an insurer, um, you know, if you happen to insure them via, via group policy, you know, um, you know, people at a restaurant or something. Um, so there's kind of lots of cool ways of bringing this in. And we're kind of the gamification house. We just like getting good data in and pushing good data out. So we're looking at all things like auto. So in terms of auto, can you gamify telematics? So obviously auto has completely changed in the last you know, five, 10 years, but putting the black box in and getting telematics, and that's certainly helped people become better drivers. We're saying, hey, can you use gamification and another layer on top of that to give people prizes? They don't go over the speed limit in a week, in two weeks, in three weeks. They don't go so many Gs, that kind of stuff. So again, it's, it's always kind of nudge theory, and it's about these, you know, nudge theory and, and behavioral economics what's best in the aggregate or try to nudge big groups of populations and what's cool about insurers is they have these huge populations you know a, a decent insurer will have 100,000 million 10 million people uh, depending on the, on the insurance size so you have these huge aggregate populations if you just sort of nudge them a bit across it's huge savings huge you know, money to be made um, and kind of for us it's cool to do like as a social impact just apart from trying to you know, be a hardcore capitalist and make lots of money for investors is hey look it's pretty cool to align that with getting people not to have cancer, and people, you know, actually to be healthier, go to the dentist. They don't have, you know, have to have tons of fillings and lose half their teeth or whatever it may be. Um, so it's got kind of a nice win-win-win where the user wins because they get a better, you know, they're healthier. The insurer wins because they get to save a whole bunch of money, and we win because we get, you know, hopefully get paid for for doing that and you know, feel feel pretty good about doing it. So it's a nice. You know, hopefully, it's a win-win-win for everyone involved. In in, in our industry, anything we we can do that 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 puts our name in front of the client uh, in, in, in a positive way, right? Rather than a once a year or once every six months renewal uh, yeah, exactly. and no relationship in between and anything that, 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 that we can do that puts our name in front of them in a positive way is, is, a, is a win. And the, the, uh, the PNC Life cross sale example, uh, every carrier knows that, that, that all the research says that, that the retention is so much better if you have multiple yeah. lines. Uh, there's just, there's just so much money being left on the table for doing these things. Um, you know, insurance historically has made lots of money for 300 years. So it's like you know, one of the questions we can, well, one of the so endless debates in insurance is about, about innovation. I was actually talking to, to Thomas, your, uh, your last guest uh, the other day about this, of sort of people have made so much money, well, why change? And why, you know, why, why sort of change things up and why go digital and, and all this stuff? Um, I think this is one of the issues is can you sort of can, can you change insurance to make it more digital make it easier for people to use and go after there's other pots of money which maybe you technically or you historically haven't gone after that you just sort of leave on the table because you're already making quite a lot of money well you know can you increase your profit margins can increase your revenues even more by like, which is kind of quite low hanging fruit and using things like you know digital technologies like us to, to just go after even you know even more fruit even more low hanging fruit there um, and, and go after more insured and more, more cross sales Awesome. Well, Alex, th thank you very much for, for, for joining me today. This, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, oh, we are recording uh, Friday at 4.50 p.m. my time in the Eastern time zone. So I'm sure it's like 10 p.m. for it's you. It's 10 p.m. It, it's it's um, on like a clock, definitely. So, uh, <laughs> on, a, on a Friday. On a Friday. Uh, so on so, Friday. so uh, th thank you so much for, for joining me today. Absolutely. Uh, this this has been a lot of fun. I, I look forward to, to see uh, gamification spread uh, both as an employee and just for the insurance industry in general, uh, because there's, I love- It's a helpful tool, right? So it just, it's just I, one, of the, one of many tools in Toolbox is a helpful tool. Um, and you can nudge people in the right direction. Hey, that's awesome for, for everyone involved. Exactly. I, I love that book, by the way, the uh, nudge. Uh, so yeah. I'm, I'm very happy to, to see it actually applied. Yeah. Uh, 
that's one, of the, that's one of the basis of what we do. So better uh, behaviors. There we go. So, th Cheers, thank buddy. you very much for thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Good stuff.